so we've got the trailer backed in. We're gonna get the gate unloaded. The first problem we've potentially already ran into. Somebody welded a couple repads on here, top and bottom, which would be great if that's where the gate was gonna go, but I didn't notice this before, and I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get lucky enough that they're both gonna land right on those repads. I'm betting the bottom hinge is gonna hit that repad. If it does, I'm gonna have to grab the torch, scarf that off. I didn't think I was gonna need the torch today, so I may have to just drop the gate, drive back, and grab the torch, drop the trailer, come back, scarf it off. So, that's usually how it goes. So that's the first issue. Okay, so let's see if we can get the gate unloaded and set into place and see how lucky we're feeling today. Okay, so we did manage to get a little lucky as far as the post goes. We missed the repads, so the hinges are hitting above the repads, so we're getting lucky there, but this post is way out of whack this way and this way. This way is not a big deal, but this way we're going to have to custom cut these hinges to make them work for our application. So I'm going to trim the wire back. What we're going to do is we're going to level the gate. We'll push it up against the post and then we'll take a measurement on the gap between hinges to see how much we're going to have to cut off of the bottom one. It'll make more sense as we go. We need to scoot the gate in and then we're gonna start sticking stuff under that wheel until it's level. When it's level, then we pull our measurement here, and then we know how much to cut off that bottom one. It's gonna look ugly at this end, but that's not our fault. The post was set crooked, so that's all we can do. Okay. So five eighths of an inch is what we need to cut off. like that so we'll take a zip disc we'll cut that off and then we'll recheck it we got the boss out here today managing things She's back Stop. with the camera she don't like the camera neither does Bridger huh? see you come over here and Bridger turns Why? his face too no I just was it's hot oh how to toughen these people up gonna be that's good gap is even so now I've got to scoot this out of the way grind the rust off and then we'll be ready to tack it and start swinging the gate and see how it works nice okay go stand Watch by out, mommy. Bridgie. 
Good job. Good job. Can you give thumbs up? Say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Out of freaking gas. It's not gas. <laughs> okay. So we were just getting ready, and I mean just getting ready to weld it up, and our welder died. I've only owned this welder for maybe eight months, I don't know. I've only used it on three or four jobs. It's only got 1100 hours on it, which is not really high, but it died. And so I'm pretty sure the fuel pump went out. I've been doing some diagnostics and stuff on it. And I'm pretty sure it's not getting fuel, and I'm pretty sure it's the fuel pump. So, we're dead in the water. We've laid the gate down. I'm going to see if I can get a fuel pump from the auto parts store, and hopefully they've got one. If they do, I'm going to throw it in, and hopefully I'll be able to come out tomorrow, get this welded on, and be done. But as for right now, we're dead in the water. This is real life. This is how it goes. So, anyway, just wanted to give you guys an update. We'll give you guys another update once we get back in the saddle. We'll see you later. All right, guys, so after a little bit of mechanic work and some diagnostics, I dug into it. It took me probably an hour to figure out what was going on. I ended up pulling the fuel pump out I was going to replace the fuel pump because I thought that was the issue, but before I did that, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't running. Just to give you guys a look, this is the fuel pump. So there's like a plastic housing here, three screws, and this is the EFI model. So on a Trailblazer 325 EFI, this is where the fuel pump is. So I pulled the three screws, pulled that out. It says do not open. I opened it anyway and inside there's an o-ring at the top of this and then the fuel pump actually drops down in this little reservoir this little sump right here and when you turn it on you can hear it running so once i got it tore apart i was actually holding the pump and i could feel it running so i thought well then it's got to be something else and I did notice that this was dry. There was no fuel in this when it quit. I just assumed that it burned up all the fuel that was in the sump or in the line, and then that was it. And I assumed that the fuel pump quit. So as I continued to dig into it, I pulled, the, there's a, let me just show you. Well, if you pop the top here, if you look, that right there is a fuel pressure regulator and it's vacuum operated the vacuum line that runs it is right here and I pulled that off it was getting vacuum I could feel it getting vacuum I unbolted the fuel pressure regulator and on the little port where the vacuum line hooks I just put my lips up to it and I started sucking on it and I could hear fuel start to suck through the system and pretty quick I saw fuel going through this filter and then I saw it going into this filter and into the sump in the fuel pump reservoir and it's alive! It's alive! So it runs now. Okay so after thinking about it I think I know what happened. When I was loading the welder on the truck the boys were helping me and I told them to watch the ratchet strap that was holding it onto the pallet. And like kids do, they quit watching. So I went to load it and 
the forklift ran over the tail on the ratchet strap. It ended up tipping the welder just a little bit. It didn't fall off or anything, it just kind of tipped over, maybe a 45 degree angle. So when it tipped, because the fuel level was so low in the tank, I'm assuming it got air in the system somewhere, somehow, when it tipped. So I put it on the truck, we went over there, I started the welder, got everything set up, and from the time it took to start the welder till the time I started welding, it burned up what fuel it still had in the system, and then vapor lock, basically. So now that I've got it reprimed, I've checked it, I've let it run for five minutes or so, and it should be fine. So, problem solved, catastrophe averted, and we'll get back over to weld the gate up either tomorrow or the next day. So we'll keep you guys posted, and we'll see you back over there. All right guys, so now that we've got the welder running again, we're gonna go ahead and get this welded out. We've got our level put on it to level it this way. We've checked it and we're level this way. I'm gonna tack the bottom one first, and then see how close we are on the top. I'm going to put some pretty good tacks on it and then we need to start working the gate see how it operates this could be interesting i'll show you guys why after i get it tacked up but we're gonna see if we can't get it tacked first and then we'll start working the gate and see how it goes why you grab the stinger see how we're out of level so the gravel that he just put in is not to grade so we're gonna dig out the track where the wheel goes and then he can fix it with his tractor later okay so as far as the grade goes, there's still quite a bit of work that's got to happen down on this lower end to get it up where it needs to be. The top side, I think it's good. The customer should know now where he's got to grade his road to. So I've got one pass on these already, but I want to put one more pass on there because I want them nice and heavy. This is a heavy gate and I don't want to have to worry about them cracking or breaking. Especially where, you know, where it's gravel road, elevations are going to change. When it starts binding up on him, that's going to be an indication to him that he's got to raise or lower the grade. Chances are in the future it'll be raised once he gets it graded out. But I don't want to have to worry about it and I don't want the customer to have to call me back up and say, hey, the welds broke. So we'll get one more pass on these all the way around and once that's done we'll check it one more time and we still have to grease the hinges we're gonna get a pass on these and then we'll give you guys another look once we're just about done Okay, here we go. Okay. You can't lift it as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty 
We're just gonna lift the pipe out of the ground. Woo! Okay. Now it's way, way high. So that's one problem. Because when I get to here, it pines up. So I think get the rake. We gotta get the rake. You know where the rake is? Yep. level there. Okay. Now, grab me the ground and let's hook it on the top of this pipe. like DS when I first got done, didn't you? No, I just... Yeah. No, I thought... Bridger looked at my slag and thought, wow, what a rookie. All right, guys, so we got this all welded out. We'll give you guys a look. Going to have to work the latch in. So we added another pass to these. I feel a lot better about that. That's about as far as we want to go this way because this needs to be built up out here. It kind of dives off right here. All right, so that's going to wrap up chapter three.
The next chapter is going to be putting top rail and middle rail on this and welding the hog panels in. That's probably going to be a little bit down the road because they still got to get some drill pipe. We appreciate you guys tuning in. We hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. And I could feel it running. So I was originally going to replace it because I thought that was the issue. I was going to replace the fuel plump. So on a bob so on a trail blight, goodness. Not with the sun at my back. Get some vines right there. Make it higher. See what I'm saying? That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We're gonna get the gate unloaded. First problem we've already 